Many people seem to mistakenly believe that almost all electric cars come standard with a heat pump, like what you've probably heard Tesla vehicles have. Now, the truth is that this is actually completely incorrect. There are many EVs. In fact, more EVs don't have a heat pump than what do. This is illustrated really well by the fact that even some of the most expensive electric cars in the world don't have a heat pump right now. And they're on sale in the US for a lot of money, over a hundred thousand US dollars. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Not many people are aware of the reality, which is that Mercedes Benz's EVs, in fact, many of them, don't have a heat pump. They will soon, but they don't right now. Now, there is a couple of things Mercedes are doing. They're upgrading their EVs with heat pumps and they're adding some different technology as well to help increase range. Now, this should be a good selling point for the cars because they don't qualify for the tax incentives in the US, even though quite a number of Mercedes-Benz EVs are actually made in the United States. So I definitely recommend you considering them. Don't consider the old model though. You definitely want one with a heat pump. It makes a big difference in colder climates like what many of you guys are living with in North America. Mercedes-Benz EQE and EQS SUVs will get standard heat pumps and more range range as a result of some changes which Mercedes believe were necessary. The German brand's models will also get a disconnect unit that decouples the front motor. This should result in some significant improvements with efficiency and give more range at least for the dual motor variants in particular and of course in cold climates as well where that heat pump will enable you to get a lot more heat from the car without using a lot of energy from the battery. The three German luxury models are set to receive a disconnect unit called the DCU, the same as the one found on European market EQE SUVs, which decouples the front motor if certain conditions are met, reducing drag losses and improving range. That's one of the key reasons why electric cars, which are dual motor, have a motor at the front and motor at the back, get less range. They always get less range. If a manufacturer says they don't, they're lying, they all do. I mean, of course, you're adding weight. Having an electric motor, they usually weigh around 90 kilos, but there's some other stuff you need as well to make them work. You're probably looking at about an additional 150 kilos on average. So about an additional 300 pounds on average to have a dual motor versus a single motor vehicle. Therefore, range declines, meaning you know you really do want a heat pump and you really do want to have this kind of technology to decouple one of those motors so you can get better efficiency, especially if you're going to pay this kind of money for an electric car. These are not cheap cars by any sense of the imagination. According to AutoCar, the DCU switches the drivetrain into rear wheel drive only by idling the front motor and gearbox on dual motor models and switches them on automatically when needed without driver intervention. So you don't have to do anything, it's an automatic process. Now it's unclear when this feature will make its way to United States built vehicles or US bound vehicles. In other words, vehicles going from Europe to the US or vehicles made in the US that are sold in the US. Another feature that will become standard in the EQE and the EQS SUVs is a heat pump, which means it wasn't standard before. Now these are expensive cars. We're talking top of the line Mercedes EVs here, which haven't been standard with a heat pump. You probably read in the comments, people say, oh, what are you talking about? It means nothing that a Tesla has a heat pump. It means nothing that X car has a heat pump. Every EV has a heat pump. Well, my friends, we're talking EVs here that cost over $100,000 don't have a heat pump standard. So those statements are unequivocally false. That's why I suggest do not read the comments. Do not read the comments anywhere, whether it's on my channel or any other place and accept them as gospel. People routinely do this and therefore they're routinely misinformed. Now, the EV that Mercedes-Benz do have that has a heat pump already fitted is the EQE, but the EQS and the EQS SUV don't, which is bizarre because the EQE is the cheaper of the car, the cheaper of those three models. Now, having a heat pump is very likely to improve range if you're driving in cooler or cold temperatures. So it definitely is something you absolutely want. And this is because it's able to improve the efficiency compared to a traditional resistive heater. Sandy Monroe has a really good video on Tesla's Octo Valve heat pump. It's kind of a unique proprietary design. I'll put a link in the description to that video. Last but not least, EQS 584 Matic sedan will be updated to produce the same 536 horsepower as the newer EQS 584 Matic SUV. And Inside EVs says that this translates to an increase of 20 horsepower over the current model. Now, Mercedes 
already sell four electric EQ models in the US. Those include the EQB SUV, which starts at 55,000, the EQE sedan at MSRP of 75,000, the EQS sedan, which has a starting price of 102,000, and offers level three autonomous driving, they claim, but it only works in certain conditions, so it's not really level three. And the EQS SUV, which goes to a minimum of 104,400, according to Mercedes-Benz's website. Now you're probably thinking, well, why is it that the cheaper model, say the EQB, which starts at 54,500, and the EQE, which starts at 75,000, don't qualify? Well, for starters, the EQE isn't considered a truck, so therefore it doesn't come below the threshold of 60,000 US dollars. It needs to be considered an SUV to qualify if it costs more than $60,000. As for the EQB, it's not manufactured in the US, so therefore it doesn't qualify you're still paying 55,000 as a starting price. You're probably thinking to yourself, hang on a minute, EQB, that price is similar to a Tesla vehicle. It is very similar, but of course, once you apply the 7,500 credit, that means the base model Tesla Model Y, which is probably the most comparable vehicle to this, costs 42,500 versus 55,000 for the EQB. Plus of course, the EQB, as is normal for a, for a luxury brand, Mercedes-Benz, Audi and BMW, comes with very few features. To get the same specification as the base model Model Y, you do need to spend about an extra $10,000. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't consider one. I mean, if you're looking at getting a gasoline powered Mercedes-Benz or an electric powered one, definitely go for the EQB. Now Tesla actually have a video all about the heat pump and how it provides more range in cold weather, which is one of the key reasons why I recommend if you're driving in an area where it gets cold during winter or just cold at any point and you need, you need more range, then it's definitely worth looking into. Before you buy an EV, does this car have a heat pump? It's not a given that it does, despite the bizarre comments that you'll see all over the internet saying, every EV has a heat pump. This is actually not true. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.